Hi everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Sam, I'm an artist and I'm really passionate about helping other artists to improve their skills and confidence and also grow their own art business that makes some serious money. You don't have to be a starving artist. I'm here to bust that outdated myth, definitely. I upload art videos every Tuesday, so tip videos, tutorials, possibly some workshops, really trying to help you improve your art skills. And then on Friday, I upload videos about having an art business and all of those things that are involved. So in today's video, I'm gonna be showing you how I drew this toadstool. It's kind of magical, I think. It should could have a little fairy on the top or something. Um, little toadstool piece in colored pencil. It's on white pastel mat, which has always been a little bit tricky for me, but I'm hoping that this video will help you to get rid of any graininess or to kind of have a little look at the techniques that are needed to create a lovely soft look and a kind of blurry background as well. So it's a piece on itself. I think this would look really nice in a frame. So I really hope you enjoy the video. I'm lightening the drawing first and then going in with the lightest colours and going in with the cold grey in the shine and then choosing a cinnamon for the rest. Just highlighting where the little blobby bits are before I go in with the pale geranium lake. I thought this was a really good colour. I'm going to apply a few layers of this because we need to get rid of the graininess in the pastel mat and also building up the vibrancy, adding quite a few layers. Adding a little bit of cream in the shine, we want to merge those two areas. And then I'm slowly building up through the reds, going in with the deep red, dark red, Caput Morton Violet, and then blending all of the kind of transitions between those colours together. If I need to darken a little bit more, I can go in with the dark sepia and shadowing the little blobs on the toadstool, going in with the ivory and then adding some warm greys to the stalk as well as some cream, adding a few little details working out where the frills go, where the shadows go, and then just adding some warm grey to soften the transitions between the two because the light falls on these toadstools in really strange ways. I'm darkening up underneath, adding a little bit of sky blue, and then I'm going to go into the sky, going in first of all with a few layers of the cold grey and then going in with sky blue, which is amazing. And then I'm blending in between before I go in with the cold greys, building up through the colours and slowly blending. Moving on down through the side, adding a little bit of the dark indigo and some Prussian blue, which is a really fab colour. And then because pastel mat, you can go light over dark, I can put a little bit of light over the top of the toadstool before I go in with the greens, the may green, the earth green yellowish, and then moving up through the pine green and the chrome oxide green darkening up where I need to go and then making sure that I blend fully in between because the actual area in this drawing that is in detail is the middle. So the blades of grass that you can see, I'm trying to add detail there, but everything else is blurry, including the sky and actually including some of the toadstools. This is the largest toadstool and I'm just going in with the exact same method. I'm using cold greys for the shine at the top, the pale geranium lake, and then building up through the deep red, dark red, adding some cream underneath, and then blending between the two areas with the cold grey, some little bits of sky blue and then cream as well. Getting rid of the graininess, adding the dark sepia on the little detail, the little knobbly bits, adding some dots because you can do light over dark, which is fantastic. Warm greys underneath, adding the little scale details, and then going in with a few browns, the nuggets, the vista, just to darken a few areas, making sure there's enough shadow going on because that's what gives it form. Otherwise, it's gonna look completely flat. We need lots of different shadows. See where the light falls and which ones are highlighted. We don't want anything uniform because that will just catch the eye in the wrong way. Nature doesn't seem to be that way. So the little discrepancies, the little parts that are slightly odd and not what you maybe think are what makes it look much more realistic. So going in with the stalk, adding some of the greys and the creams and the cadmium yellows, adding some pale geranium light to the back, making sure that this one is in shadow because the light's not going to get through from the huge toadstool that's above it. And then as I'm working in pastel mat, which does tend to smudge, I'm working from left to right, top to bottom as I'm right-handed. Obviously, if you're left-handed, possibly work the other way around because you don't want to be leaning on your work as you carry on. Going in the same method in the sky, really blending, really going in and adding 
lots of the lighter colours in between to make sure that you blur everything out using the greens and the cold greys as well as the Prussian blue, the sky blue and going in with the chrome oxide green as well. These are trees, they look like it's hard to tell so I find it easy to squint your eyes, same with these leaves here, just squinting your eyes and making sure that you're not adding too much detail, you're blocking in the colour and just working through the shapes that you see and the colours that you see. I'm trying to disengage my brain from thinking that I need to draw a leaf because if that happens you tend to find that it doesn't work out. I'm just drawing the shapes and the colours that I see and then having faith that the method will come through and it will start to look like a blurry leaf. These toadstools were the ones that were probably in the most focus. Again along that line of sharpness through the middle the top is blurry, the bottom is blurry, going in with the exact same method. I'm adding lighter reds, slowly moving to the darker reds, adding a little bit of these colours to the other toadstools that tend to fade, and then going in with the warm greys for the stalks. Very much blurry here. There's blur in the background, so I'm going in with the burnt ochre, which is an amazing colour for a lovely, vibrant, orangey colour. And I can add light strands over the top of dark to put the grass in. And then going into this last toadstool, exactly the same method, building up through the layers. And there's probably about 10 to 15 layers at least on each toadstool. So take your time, don't rush and slowly blend up and build up through the colours, going back and forth through those transitions where the shine is at the top and where the darkest part usually at the bottom, adding the Caput Morton Violet, a little bit of dark sepia if you really need to but then make sure you go over the top with the reds as well so it's more of a subtle transition between the two adding some pale geranium lake for the transition between the shine and the darkest parts and then going into the top with the cold grey one and some sky blue adding some detail we actually used fuchsia here which was lovely and some orange glaze as well which really brought out the vibrancy in this toadstool as well as some kind of chrome yellows and some terracotta and the beige red as well. Exactly the same for the stalk. Again, the warm greys building up through the colours. I'm not really adding any detail to begin with. I'm just putting in the shapes and the colours. Same with these leaves. I'm really trying to disengage my brain, not thinking that these are leaves, just thinking that they're shapes and colours and trying to block in all of the darkest parts around the leaves, which then will make up for the leaf in the middle. And that ended up with a really nice blurry look without really focusing on the detail and drawing the eye away from the toadstools, which I'm aiming to be the focus of this piece. Going into the last leaf, and then once you've built in your colours, you can darken up with some darker browns, the bisters, nugget, dark sepia, all of the greens again, adding some of the lighter stalks over the top of dark, and then going in slowly building up through the lovely greens to add the grass and the grass in between, darkening up where it needs to be dark, and adding some finishing touches to the whole of the piece to make sure that it all pulls together. I always do this, about 90% done and then finishing off at the end, just adding some dark areas, some highlights, just going over the whole piece to check that everything is working properly and not looking out of place. So working my way over the whole drawing until it starts to come together and you're not going to make it any better by doing any more at all. I hope you found that helpful. If you would like to see the full tutorial, I do have it in my online membership, The Joy of Drawing, and I will put the link down below. If you did enjoy it and would like to come back for more, then please do like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.